An estimated 7 million Americans have Alzheimer's disease, and unbelievably, that number is expected to double by the year 2060. For decades now, there was no effective treatment, but in recent years, the FDA has approved two medications that can slow cognitive decline in patients with early symptoms. Now there are international trials looking into whether administering the treatment before symptoms occur can actually prevent or delay the onset of the disease. CBS News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. John LaPook is covering this story for CBS Sunday Morning this weekend. He joins us now with a preview. Dr. LaPook, thank you for your time. First, can you share how the treatment works? Well, you know, the way it works is that there's this gooey substance in the brain called amyloid that covers nerves and interferes with the way we're able to think and the way nerves are able to communicate with each other. Well, these are antibodies that actually remove the amyloid from the brain, and they've been shown to slow cognitive decline by about 30 percent in people with early early Alzheimer's, but the problem is they don't reverse the disease, they don't even stabilize the disease. So of course the next question is, what if you gave these medications before people had any symptoms? Mm. I mean, imagine giving somebody Lipitor or a statin to try to, you know, after they've had five heart attacks, they're already in heart failure. That's too late. You want to give it before they start to have symptoms, and that's exactly the, the idea of this trial. What is new about this approach contrasted with things we've tried in the past? You know, I have, and I have been so frustrated. I've been at CBS for 19 years now, believe it or not, and I've done story after story after story about giving this drug or another drug, uh, and even antibody uh, that, that remove amyloid uh, in other trials. They've all been a failure. And what's different here is that these are newer types of antibodies that work better. They can actually remove the amyloid from the brain. And they, they show this on, on PET CT scans, Amavit scans. Uh, and also the philosophy of that the timing is so important. And that's why in this trial, uh, they, have, they look at people who have a genetic form of the disease that causes early onset, early onset Alzheimer's. So for example, within a particular family, they may get it at 45, 44 to 46, right? Now, if you're gonna give somebody with no symptoms these medications, you need to know, well, are, are they working or are they not working? So if everybody in somebody's family gets it, say, at 45, uh, and they give the antibody, say, seven years earlier, then they, and the person is now 51 and doing well, then that's a suggestion that it's really working. So very excited. I'm always cautious. I don't want to give people false hope, but I'm very optimistic here. As part of this piece, you interviewed Bill Gates, whose father developed Alzheimer's later in life. What was his role in the research? Bill Gates has given more than $300 million uh, towards Alzheimer's research. And over and beyond that, he, his head is in it. You know, of course, you know, he's, he's a big uh, uh, computer expert. He, he's talked about the role of AI because there's so much data that's hard to put together. Well, AI is perfect for that. He's very interested in getting trials together, getting more and more people enrolled in the trials. He wants the early diagnosis. He's invested a lot of money into a simple blood test that if it's positive, uh, can suggest that you have, you are at increased risk for getting Alzheimer's, and that's so crucial, right? For people out there who are not in the less than 1% of the, the rare genetic defect, this is the rest of us, right? All of us, I think, have in the back of our head, well, you know, this, this is the last thing in the world I want to get, and if there's something I can do about it, then I want to know sooner rather than earlier. Well, that's a philosophical question for some people, right? I would want to know. Well, the way you might know is, say, at a certain age, 50 or 60, you get a simple blood test, like you walk into your doctor's office and you get a cholesterol test, or you get a test for diabetes. Now you would get a test for this phosphorylated tau-217, a fancy name for a blood test that, that helps uh, say that you're at increased risk for Alzheimer's. And if it's positive, you could get a brain scan. If it lights up amyloid, then you could say, okay, if the trial works and if it shows as the early, early, early uh, suggestion that it may be having an effect, if it turns out that in the long run it's safe and effective, then you would go ahead and get some medication to just get rid of the amyloid in your brain before you start to have symptoms, not after, and hopefully that would prevent or, you know, delay or, or prevent Alzheimer's. Yeah. So a big deal. In addition to being a journalist, you're also a practicing internist. I think some of our viewers might not know that. Is this changing the way you think about Alzheimer's when you treat patients? 
you know, Jessica, it is. I mean, I, I will confess, I've been practicing medicine for a lot of time. I'm a doctor for 45 years. I can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, but over the years, people come in and uh, they say, I'm forgetting names. And, and, you know, and of course, we all forget names and we're wondering, is that just normal aging? Is it, is it something more serious than that? And I, I have to say, a lot of my patients really don't want advanced cognitive testing because they really didn't want to know. And I'm not so sure I wanted to know if there was nothing for we, that we could do. Uh, but now there is something we can do. We, we know for a fact, because there are these two FDA approved drugs, to treat early onset dementia with people with Alzheimer's, you can slow the rate of decline by about 30% over 18 months. It may even be more uh, as you extend out time. So now I'm being more aggressive. When people come in, I, I go into more detail when they start to have these complaints, and, and they're, now I'm sending people for cognitive testing, and, uh, and then there have been people who I've actually put on this medication. So, um, yeah, I'm being more aggressive. This yeah. has changed my practice already. The arc of this yeah. is completely different. The silhouette of the future is there. I, you can just make it out. And, and, of course, we all have so much hope about this. And, again, I don't want to give people out there, you know, 7 million people with Alzheimer's. I don't want to give anybody who has advanced Alzheimer's false hope here because we really don't have anything for them right now. In the future, it's possible that people who have more advanced forms than, than just early cognitive impairment may benefit from a cocktail of medication yeah. where you're going after amyloid and inflammation and an abnormal protein called tau, T-A-U. So I think there will be better treatment options in the future, but for me, the most exciting thing right now is the thought of prevention because for every one of those 7 million people who have Alzheimer's, there are a lot of family members who are wondering, you know, uh, is this in my future too? And if there's a possible treatment, that early detection could prove even more crucial. Dr. LaPook, thanks so much for the time. Thanks for joining us. And for more on Dr. LaPook's deep dive into these promising new treatments for Alzheimer's disease, check out his full report this weekend on CBS Sunday Morning.